Hey guys, what's going on? Dan here. I'm with Emily. We've done a couple of videos in the past, not that many. We should do more, don't yeah, you agree? We, we are here in beautiful Walnut Ridge Acres. Let's go with that. Okay. What kind of office is this, right? I mean, sitting it's outdoors, right? So, uh, Emily's up visiting from Louisiana. It's probably freezing cold for you here, right? Yeah, it's pretty nippy. Yeah, fall weather for me. And uh, Emily and I were talking about how Regardless of whether you're Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, Louisiana, there's several common myths or misconceptions. Yeah, when it comes to, let's just put it all under the umbrella of RVing. So Emily and I are going to, we haven't rehearsed this, so we're gonna talk about five, six, seven different ones that we hear all the time. And then we're gonna give you guys our opinions on it. I guess you could say we're experts because we do this all day long, every day. Every day. But again, some of this I would say is opinion based information, especially when it comes to our first topic. So we'll just jump right in. You ready? Yep, ready. This one's one of my favorite, okay? We're gonna be relaxed. I mean, it's like a show here. We need a little set. First one I hear all the time is a customer will come in, they've never owned an RV before, and they'll say, I have to have, all my friends say, I have to have a fifth wheel or a motor home or a travel trailer or a fold down or a pop up, however you wanna say it. Yeah, we hear that a lot. You hear that a lot yeah, too? All the time. So, I'm gonna give you my opinion and then you're gonna give me your opinion, okay? okay? Here's my opinion. I have a travel trailer, you know that. Uh, I have a Puma, love it. Puma doesn't pay me. Um, I think it's all about two things. One, maybe three things. What you're gonna do with it, how much you can afford, and how comfortable you are towing it down the road. So my thought is when we bought ours, it was for vacations and extended trips. So we wanted to make sure we had something that was big enough that the whole family could fit in, but that was, Important. yeah, that was comfortable for me to pull and that was affordable. So I know we did buy from Walnut Ridge before I worked here. Um, I liked, I, I wanna ask how you guys do it down there at Primo, but when we met with Nikki, our salesperson, she did an interview with us. Like, what are your intentions? You know, what, what kind of vehicle do you have? All these good things. And that kind of helped us steer in the direction that we went. But I'm interested to hear like what's your take on it and, and your process down there. Um, at Primo, we, uh, as soon as the customer comes in, we do an interview with them as well, uh, find out what they're towing with, um, how many people they intend on uh, sleeping in the camper, um, you know, any particular, you know, things that they want outside kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, bunks, whatever. Um, and then the salesperson can narrow it down um, and take them out to show them. Um, I think that fell on a blank. You're fine. Just go whenever you're ready. We'll edit it. Um, your friends aren't camping in your camper. You and Very your family true. are. Yeah. Um, I think it goes by what you can tow with your vehicle, um, your family's needs, obviously how mm -hmm. many people you're sleeping, what you're comfortable with towing, and what you like, what you prefer. Some people prefer cooking inside. Some people prefer cooking outside. Mm -hmm. um, some people pre prefer bunks. Uh, some people have toys that they want to bring. So really, it's all about what you prefer. Well, and you guys have motorhomes. We do not have motorhomes up here. Something else that I think about, when we get to our camping spot, we unhook the camper and then we have our tow vehicle to run errands or whatever. Like, so you may want a motorhome, but you also got to think about the fact that you've got to tow a vehicle behind you that you can drive around. And now some people, you know, like to, if you know, if they have a bunkhouse, and you know they have some friends coming along with them. They may want a motorhome so everyone can ride together. Mm -hmm. You know, having a truck and a trailer, you might not be able to do that. That is true. So it's all about really what the customer prefers. So it's it's personal preference, Definitely. it's budget, and it's comfort level. You know, some people may not be comfortable pulling a 32 foot travel trailer down the road. Some people not, might not be comfortable driving a, a class A motorhome. Right. So. I feel like that's a pretty strong explanation of how we see myth or misconception one. Yeah, you agree? I, I think so too. Okay, so on to myth misconception number two, which Emily's gonna tell us what it is. All right, so the next topic we're gonna talk about is the myths about buying from a dealership versus an individual and hidden fees. Oh, 
Great topic. God, we're going to be here all day talking about <laughs> this one, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's compare. A lot of people that I've talked to, the first time they come in, they automatically have, uh, let me back up. One of the things that you can Google like or YouTube is RV dealer. And one of the first words that comes after that is scam. Yeah. And it's all these videos talking about scams. And listen, they're out there. Don't get me wrong. I think you have the individual people that are scamming you because if you're buying it from a person, you have, you no, have no clue getting. what you're getting. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, water damage isn't always visible. Buying from a dealership, um, at least uh, we do, we go through the whole unit mm -hmm. before, uh, as soon as it gets there and when they come to pick up. Um, so you know what you're getting. You get a full walkthrough. Um, you know, you get the whole, you know. You guys have as is units as well? Yes. Okay, so to be really clear, let's, let's new units, that's where you're gonna have all of the dealer warranties, factory warranties, you can buy the extended service contracts. You have the used units, which have been walked through, they've been checked out. At least I know at our dealership, and I'm assuming your dealership, we're gonna be up front if there are issues with right. that used unit. You can buy service contracts on those as well. Then you have the as is, which is exactly what it says. These are kind of like what you're buying from an individual, but we're being up front with you and saying, there may be some stuff wrong with this, right? Right? Yes. right? So let's talk a little bit about the hidden fees. I know that, you know, without naming dealerships or getting anything like that, there are a lot of dealerships that do hidden fees. Yes. So I think without getting specific, the safest thing to say is, you know, we don't do hidden fees. You guys don't do hidden fees. And I think it's important you as the consumer, from the time they go to the dealership till they sign that paperwork in the finance department, ask questions. Don't ever Definitely. feel intimidated right it, it's just like going and buying a car or anything else you the buyer are in control and don't ever feel like you've lost that control to ask those questions because i'm proud of what we do here i think you're proud of what you do at primo right and and it's important that people push us and make sure they're getting their questions answered because when you're not hiding anything it's kind of like when you were a kid and you lied about something you kind of had that look on your face and you get caught in your lie but if you're telling the truth, it's super easy. You're like, no, here, here's the paperwork. We're not lying, right. right? Do your research on the dealership you're buying from and ask questions. That's the key. Yep. Be an informed buyer. So this ties into part one or myth one. You can do your research. You can study about what you think you want before you ever get to the dealership. Now, granted, we're going to walk you through that in the interview process, but you can kind of have an idea of what, what you, you want, want already, right? And most customers do. Yeah, and you can read and learn a lot about dealerships and hidden fees before you ever get there, but then don't lose that power once you walk in the building. Make sure you continue that on, right? Yeah, make sure you continue to ask questions. Number two, done. Okay, here we go. Number three. I'm going to hit you with this one. I didn't tell you about it before. You ready? Yep. It's one of my favorites. I'm a camper. I know you're not a camper, but I'm a camper. One of my favorites is camping is expensive. <laughs> we hear that a lot. Right? Yep. So yeah, there it can be. And, and that really depends on what you're doing. Like if you come here and you buy, you know, a smaller entry level model and you have a Chevy 1500 that you already own, it's not that expensive. No. If you come and buy a huge class a motorhome or you're buying a gigantic fifth wheel and you're going out and buying a f-350 super duty to pull it you're starting to get a little expensive and then it goes back to it depends on you know on the customer's budget yeah. now what i think here's how when i hear people say that this is what i think i think camping is expensive so going out on the weekends is expensive or making trips okay when we went into the dealership, like I said earlier, we already had in mind that this was gonna be our vacation. Like we were turning our vacations into this, right? right? So coming before that and going to condos and either they're driving to the place or, or fly, flying, which gets really pricey. So we go to golf stores all the time. My favorite place. I've probably talked to you a hundred times about it, right? Right. Uh, you know, $1,500, $2,000 for the week for a condo. $300 a person for airfare for four people if you really booked a year in advance. So what, that's another $1,100, $1,200 right there. So we're up to like $3,200 and we haven't ate anything, had some drinks, 
went out, bought souvenirs, you know what I mean? Done excursions. Right, right. Now, we spend a decent amount of gas money driving down there and back, but not anywhere near, you know, three, four thousand dollars. And then where we stay at in Golf State Park, it's like three hundred dollars for the week. Wow. Crazy, right? And it is absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna put a link down below to my Golf Shores review because I love it that much and I think they will too. A little shameless plug for myself, <laughs> why not? Um, but I think this goes back to the buying experience. Camping is the same way. You know, if, if you're not planning your trips correctly or you're not looking around at the different places you can stay, yeah, of course it can get expensive. You, you know what I mean? Right. But there's, and you know a little bit more about this than I do, maybe a lot more than I do. Like when you talk about like the full-time RVers and you know, you see all those blogs and travel channels where they're working at the campgrounds that they stay at, they're working remote. You're one of those millennials that us old guys always talk about. Like your generation has taken to the road and you're doing your work on the road and you're just living the life. Why haven't you graduated to that yet? Why are you sedentary? But you know, hey, did I miss anything? Did I not hit all the major points? Like again, if you're eating filet mignons every night in your camper, yeah, it's gonna get expensive. Well, and that kind of goes back to um, people thinking that, you know, you have to go somewhere, you know, out of state to go camping. Mm -hmm. There's campgrounds right down the road. Oh yeah. I mean. There's plenty of options is yeah. what you're saying. Um, I know there's a lot of, of good apps for your phone yeah. that you can pull up campgrounds. Yelp, Yelp does great reviews on campgrounds. Google does great reviews on campgrounds. And I mean, even if you're taking an hour trip away from your house, you're still getting away. You're still sitting in the outdoors. I mean, it feels like kind of like we're camping now, doesn't know, it? Right? We need the little fire and the, camp, or the camper in the background. All right, guys, number four is going to be a pretty broad subject. We're going to talk about uh, safety, towing, uh, comfort in towing, mm -hmm. service department, things like that. That's a big subject. All right, go for it, girl. What, tell me about your experience with towing. Oh, so you're just going to immediately tow. throw it over to me. I see yeah. how you are. Okay. Uh, well, I can ramble, so cut me off. Okay. Uh, we started out with uh, Sierra 1500. I don't remember what year it was. Uh, we were 2,200 pounds under our max tow limit. We bought the Puma, which was like 7,800 pounds. So we were, we had 2,200 pounds roughly left over. Right. Okay. Uh, we got the equalizer hitch with the four point sway control. I felt great. Um, I worked with the service department on what we needed. They set it all up for us initially. Um, I never, I never felt like I had a problem. Now I will say that a year later, we upgraded to a Ford F-350 okay. that has the Super Cab. And it wasn't because of my comfort level with towing with the 1500, it was with having the room for the family in the right. tow vehicle. Right. And it kind of goes back to what we said earlier in one of the myths where you're talking about, you know, some people may want a class A to have room for their whole family right. in it. Ours was, we don't want to drive two vehicles plus tow the camper. Um, but I think, I'd never towed anything, maybe a small boat before we bought our camper. Um, I was a little intimidated when I came in, especially, you know, going through the orientation and then pulling out. Um, and I, I want you to talk some to your guys' service department and how that works. Okay. Um, but I, once you get out there and you start doing it, it's not that scary. Right. I mean, it's, it's using common sense, making sure that you have the devices on your vehicle to help, proper brake control, proper sway control, good mirrors, um, and just driving smart, you know, like uh, not tailgating people. Safety. Yeah, safety, right. just in general, realizing that you have an 8,000 pound thing behind, behind you. you. Yeah, like that's never gonna go away, or it's, it, at least it hasn't for me, even years of driving now. Um, and I guess last, and then I want to kick over to you. It's being mindful of yourself when you're driving because, you know, going back to Gulf Shores, uh, you know, that's a 12 hour drive. If I start getting tired, I stop driving. Stop. I, I just stop driving because there's no sense in putting myself or the family yeah, or in a dangerous else. situation. Yeah. But I would say you should do that even if you're driving a Mazda Miata <laughs> back from Gulf Shores. You know what I mean? Like, right. those are just common sense. But, you know, Talk about it from your side with with how service department works or how a service department should work. Okay, um, okay first I want to say that um, our service department does a really good job 
um, when customers come up, uh, come to pick up mm -hmm. in the orientation, um, explaining safety, uh, going over the hitch and um, the equalizers and, you know, uh, sway control and all that. Um, I think you said that, you know, you had switched vehicles. Yep. Um, after you purchase your camper, I think you need to, you know, keep a good relationship with your service department. Because if you do happen to switch vehicles, um, it's a good thing to always go to them uh, for advice and what to do, you know, if you do need to switch your hitches or adjust them or anything like that. Um, Those are great points. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, one of the first things I did when I bought that 350 was immediately call here. And again, that was before I worked here. Called here and I said, look, I upgraded my vehicle. It's a different height. And, and one of the things I think we should point out too is the people at the service departments do this all, all day, day, every, every day. day, year round. There is no off season for them. And one of the things I had run into was all my friends or friends of friends when they find out, you know, I'm like, oh, I upgraded an F-350. They're like, oh, take your sway control off. You don't need that. Or, oh, just plop it on there and you're good to go. My immediate thought, maybe I'm just boasting myself. You're boasting yourself. Was, a little bit. <laughs> but I'm like, why not go ahead and have the sway control on there? Even if I don't extra need safety. it, yeah. extra safety. So I didn't listen to them. I called the dealership. I said, what do I need to do? Um, I believe Mark even actually said, hey, I can walk you through it if that's what you need to do. If you're too far away to bring it here or something like, like I can help you. But I ended up driving it over here. I was here 40 minutes while they leveled everything out. And then I left with comfort and peace of mind knowing that it was exactly, because have you ever seen those measurements? It's like measure the front tire, the back tire, and then go back and then remeasure this and do this and lower this this far. I mean. I'm not good at math. I wasn't comfortable with doing that. You kind of just want to look back and be like, yeah, that looks pretty level. And they're like, no, don't do that. You know what I mean? So, so let the experts handle that. Yeah. Just why not? If you already have the relationship going back to that whole safety thing, let them be the expert and help you. Right? Yeah, I agree. Great myth. Okay. I want to talk about one more thing. Sorry guys. Um, going back to the topic of decision making. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of customers that come in, um, they'll, you know, decide on a small unit mm -hmm. and uh, a year later they'll come back and want to trade it in because they didn't have enough space. Uh -huh. um, and it can be, you know, counter space, sleeping space, um, storage, uh, it can go down to the size of your sink because you didn't realize how many dishes you were going to wash or, you know, not be able to fit a pot in your sink, yeah. things like that. Um, I think that's really important for people to make sure that they know what they want and they need to think about, you know, not just right now, but you know, in the future, what they're going to want. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's, that's an absolute great point. You guys have, you know, we've had our little things like overall, we love our Puma, but when we go on that week long trip and Sarah or I are doing dishes, cause I share the dish responsibility and you've got the smaller sink. And so you can't quite wash as much as you want, or you just feel a little bit cramped sometimes, right. you know. And, you know, some people, they, you know, don't realize that, you know, in the future, they may want to use their, their camper for work. Yeah. And they might be living in it for weeks at a time, yeah, staying in true. it for very weeks true. at a time. And that's just something that you, you want to make sure that you think about before you purchase. Um, anything else on that topic? No, but I got one more that I want to throw in there. One more, and I you're gonna love it when I say it. Are you ready? Maybe. Maintenance. Oh. Maintenance, maintenance, that's maintenance. Big, that's a, a broad. Topic. It is, but I feel like I I feel like we've been pretty captivating so yeah. far. We've been good. Uh, I ramble a lot. I get it. But being an RV owner and working on this side of it and seeing people bring their units in. And, and you don't you love that part? Yeah, Isn't this like amazing? Oh, yeah. every day is like vacation for me. Yeah. I mean, getting go out, take pictures of units, hang out in them. See the new, new floor plans, just yeah. The open it's exciting. House was awesome, right? Yes, it was. We put a link down below on this, or actually, it'd be up above on Facebook. We're gonna put a link somewhere to our open house video that we. we it did. was amazing, guys. It it really was. There's some cool stuff coming, yeah. and I'm I'm always amazed at you wouldn't think in that amount of space they could change that much. I know. But you're like even the little things like just the subtle color changes and you're like because let's face it 15 years ago campers were ugly like it was dark wood dark furniture carpet you know what i mean yeah and now 
just slight color changes of the floor or the interior. It's amazing. So there's one tip before we get into maintenance. Think about those things when you're buying your camper too, because I know it, you can take one of our Cougar models. We both carry Cougar. Yeah. You can take a Cougar and you have what, three different color variations yeah. in a unit? They have and, the same floor plan and walk in them and look completely different. Yeah, yeah, they just have a completely different feel to them. So make sure you're asking those questions as well. There's a lot that goes into this. And make sure, you know, that you're not just looking at the floor plan, that you're actually looking at the interior and stuff because, you know, two months down the road, you might be sitting in your camper and you might think, eh, I'm not crazy about this interior, you know? I don't like this dark chocolate with this dark wood. Yeah, I get it. So maintenance. Here, when I was a customer, I got a, I got a thorough talking to about the importance of the maintenance, not only for keeping up with your warranty stuff, no but also just to help you have more comfort and peace of mind when you're pulling these things you know um you and i are both on facebook all the time yep. we both run the facebook accounts i see every once in a while not a lot where somebody will say man i wish they made these things better so they didn't fall apart going down the road my comment back to them is you're pulling this thing down the road in hurricane winds you know 70 yeah. plus mile an hour and bouncing and vibrating everywhere Things are going to happen to your camper, right? Right. Yeah. But there's a lot of stuff you can do to, pr to protect that. Pre yeah, prevent it. I mean. Right. So here's what I've learned as an RV owner, that my service department is invaluable. Like, I love Very. those guys. They're an email or a phone call away, which I love. I actually. Like, like and a text away. Text away now. Yeah, hey, you can text us now. But I mean, I think two weeks after I bought my camper, I had our service advisor's cell phone number. Who does that you know what i mean yeah. maybe they don't do that with everybody maybe i'm special i don't know but just don't the, flatter yourself dan I know. <laughs> the basic care and maintenance keeping your roof checked for leaks checking the seals around your windows making sure that you are winterizing your unit properly making sure this is the biggie uh, did you see my video the other day where we pulled the brake apart yeah. and it went everywhere yep. So bearing packing and checking your brakes, checking your tires, like these are all things that everyone should keep up with. Once you buy these things, it's just, just like your house. And I mean, even when you're out in the road, you know, simple things like checking your tires while you're out in the road when you stop for gas or things like that. Well, not only will it change your gas mileage or your diesel fuel mileage, whatever you want to say, I can feel the difference going down the road. Like if, if I forgot when we left the campground, I'm only, 10 mile in before I'm like, I've got to check my tires because they either feel sluggish or they feel too bouncy. Like I can tell. So I think the thing that we can tell everybody is that maintenance is important, right? Very, very, very. It's back to having a great relationship with your service, service department, department, working with them on a regular basis. And uh, don't assume that everything's fine just from looking at your camper and being like, everything looks great, right? right? All right, Emily, I forgot what number we were on because I ramble and you know I ramble. Um, but I think one of the last great things that we should point out before we end the video, and hopefully we do more of these, maybe we'll figure out a way where you can do them from Louisiana. And we can tie them in together. We tie it in together. That would be fun. That'd be fun. Um, accessories. Okay. Okay. I personally thought to a certain extent when I pulled off the lot, I was good to go. And I'm sure a lot of other people do. Now, you and I aren't in the service building as much, right? But, you know, things to think about when you're buying, you're going to have to have a uh, sewer hose. Stinky Slinky, <laughs> call it by its name. You're going to have to have a sewer hose. You're going to want a water, uh, water filter. You're water gonna, hose. Water hose. Water pressure regulator. Yep. What's another one? Let's see if you can get it. Um, hold on. Okay. Surge, surge, protector. surge protector. I'm so glad you thought of that. Surge protector, uh, levelers. Yep. You buy the bubble levels on the outside. They make they're a game changer. Um, I, I can't even think of the name of them. Chalks. Chalks. Chalks are a must. But um, what is the brand of that? You know what? Maybe it's better because then I don't look like I'm promoting it. But we have this really cool thing. It's red and you drive your tire up on it. And the further you go, the higher it raises it. So it levels your vehicle. Oh, um, what is it called? Road, ma not road. No, 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 no. Um, I can't think of They're great. Yeah, They're great. Um, it's little things like that because who wants to take a bunch of Talk about the things you can stack, right? Yeah. 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 Well, we have those and then we have this other thing. It's red and it's really thin here and then it gets bigger. 
and you drive your tire up on it and as you drive up it basically raises you and then you drive over it when you're done oh it's amazing but it's those little things that people don't think about that you're gonna need for your RV so I think that, that it's another thing um, toilet paper toilet paper make sure to use RV marine grade toilet paper deodorizer for your yeah. toilet uh, chemicals I mean list goes on and on and on and on and now we're not even talking about the decorating of it the dishes like all that stuff but there are a lot of things that you're gonna need for your RV so that goes back to the very first thing we talked about which is when you're here to buy make sure you talk to your service and parts, parts department, parts department. about all these other things you're gonna need pay attention for I don't know if um, you guys do this here but um, at our parts department, before you come to pick up your camper, they do a full walk around. They measure all yep. of your vents and stuff for bug screens and anything like that. So that's helped. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're not, I do remember briefly or a, a little bit of that day. I mean, it, it was a big day, but there was a lot of information to be taken in. You know, they wanted to make sure I was comfortable, but they helped me a lot on those things of saying, oh, I never even thought I had to have that or, oh, I didn't think about that. You know what I mean? Right. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. It was a ton of fun. Emily, thanks for coming and shooting Thank it with me. Thank you for having me up here. I'm gonna have to come down to Louisiana next. Yes. And maybe, like we said earlier, we'll have to do from you from Louisiana and me from here. Definitely. So guys, leave a comment down below for us. Tell us how awesome we did or how bad we did, right? Or how much Dan talked. Or how much I talked. And uh, if there's a myth or a misconception that you've heard that we didn't cover, share that below. Maybe we'll do another video. Yeah. Yeah, we'd love some user feedback. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching.